Run it back, nation! What is good? It is your boy DJ Eastwood, running back Philly. No frauds, no fanboys, no intros. Algo gang, give me the goal for likes on this video is 1 million. Because basketball is back and we're here. And if you're excited about it, hit the like button. The goal is 1 million likes. Subscribe to the channel. If you watch these videos and you're not subscribed to the channel, that is fraudulent behavior. And this is the No Fraud Zone. So hit the little red button. Turn your notification bell on and join the Playback TV streams. We're back. Last night we were live reacting to the second half of the Eagles game and the Sixers preseason game at the same time. It was a lot of fun. Join us. The link is in the description. Download the app. Turn your noties on. Join the wave. Let's get into it. It is time. It is time to completely overreact to a preseason game. Yes, it is absolutely time to completely overreact to a preseason game. Here's what I want to say first. The Boston Celtics went out there in a preseason game and played their entire roster. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, Chris Stapps Porzingis, bald-ass Derek White. Derek White's forehead is now just his entire head. I was shocked. My eyes hurt. I can't believe he's doing this to me. When we play the Celtics guy, I see this guy's whole head the whole time. Um, They played their whole team. And they weren't jogging around. They weren't out here just going through the motions. Oh, it's a preseason game. Let's just go through the motions, get some shots up, get some. They were they were trying. They were trying to win the game. And the Philadelphia 76ers, without Joel Embiid, James Harden, DeAnthony Melton, and most importantly, without the Turkish trigger, Furkan Korkmaz, hung with them. For three quarters, until they until they put the deep benches in, until they put the Delaware blue coats in, the Sixers were right there with that Boston Celtics team. This Drew Holiday thing was supposed to take them over the top. There's no way in hell the Sixers without Joel Embiid should have been anywhere close to the Boston Celtics in this game the way that we reacted to Drew Holiday joining that squad. I am 100% not sold on the Boston Celtics. I don't care. I don't care if I overreacted when the Drew Holiday thing went down. Here's where I am now. And let me tell you, oh, you flip-flop all the time. Oh, you contradict yourself. Oh, you're, you're wishy-washy. When the facts change, my opinion changes. You know who said that? Albert damn Einstein, okay? Stick with me. I'm not sold on the Boston Celtics. I am sold on the Philadelphia 76ers. And let me tell you why. I saw more ball movement and just player movement off ball and action happening on the court offensively in one preseason game than I saw for three years under Doc Rivers. It was a night and day difference, and it was beautiful. Dribble handoffs, ball screens, pin down screens, off ball screens. I mean, the, 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 the motion was just, wow, we look like an active, high-paced basketball team. Incredible, right? Defensively? Bro, not even close. Not even close. The effort defensively from this Sixers team in a damn preseason game was on another level. The Nick Nurse effect... When, in contrast to what we just saw for three seasons, is going to just—it's just going to be—it's just going to—it's going to blow people's minds. I really think it is. I really think the full potential of the players on this squad you're finally going to see, because we finally have a coach that's trying to do something. Now let's talk about what we need to talk about, Jaden Springer. 
I'm going to get to Maxi. Don't you worry. But Jaden Springer, ladies and gentlemen. Last year, we were wondering, how is it possible for this kid to have dropped 41 points in, an, in, a, in a game to get the Delaware Bluecoats to the finals in the G League? How is it possible for this kid to drop seven three-pointers and 41 points? And what do you have? Three or four blocks in that G League game. How is it possible for that kid to be that damn good in the G League and not even sniff the NBA floor? And then you see a coach come along and actually use him to his strengths. And he drops 14. He was two for two from three-point range. He was active. He's probably the most athletic player on this entire roster. He catches a drop pass from somebody. Somebody drove baseline, dropped him a dime, and he dunked on Jason Tatum. And then the very next possession down the floor, Jason Tatum, NBA superstar, gets a run to the rim, says to himself, all right, welcome to the league, Jaden Springer. I'm going to have to show you what's up. And he tries to pay him back. He tries to poster my young king, Jaden Springer, and Jaden Meets him at the rim like he was given an invitation. Here's my RSVP. Get that junk out of here. Don't bring that juice to a gin party. Grown-ups are speaking. Jaden Springer season. <sighs> I'm very excited for that. I'm very excited for that. Tyrese Maxey, a smooth 24 points in about two and a half quarters. He's going to be, Tyrese Maxey's going to be an all-star. I don't care if you think I'm overreacting. Tyrese Maxey's easily going to be an all-star. He's easily going to drop 25 points per game this season. And the main thing is the level of confidence that he has right now in his fourth season in the NBA. It's no longer, should I shoot the ball? It's no longer, should I be taking this possession or should I give it to this guy, give it to that guy? Yeah, he was playing without Joel and James, but I wouldn't expect it to be any different when they're on the floor. I think Maxie's going to have that level of confidence this season, and I think he's going to have that green light this season because I think the coaching staff and the other players 100% believe that Tyrese Maxey is on the same level as James Harden or Joel Embiid. Now, I keep saying James. I know we don't know if he's going to play. We don't know if he's going to get traded, but I just got to see. He's on the roster right now, so I got to pretend he's part of the team. I just can't. Maxi just, man. And he keeps getting faster. He had a couple drives to the basket in the first half, all the way from half court, all the way to the rim. Finishing over seven foot four, Chris Stapps, Porzingis. Let me tell you something. The Boston Celtics traded for Chris Tapp's Porzingis to bolster their interior defense. It's what they thought. This dude can't even catch up to six foot two Tyrese Maxey. One on the right side. Ooh, there was one where he went middle of the lane, up and under with the left, with the English. Kyrie Irving layup package jelly. Let's go. And Chris Depps will probably be hurt in like week three. Let's be serious. But Tyrese was getting to the rim. He was getting to a little fall away mid range. He was shooting the three. I mean, it's maxi season, dude. Like if you're denying, if you're still denying it, what was wrong with you? If this was a regular season game he and he played all four quarters, he would have dropped 30 with his eyes closed. Jump on board now. Jump on board now. As far as the rest of the team, listen. Patrick Beverly makes me laugh, and I'm going to enjoy watching him play the whole season. I'm not going to enjoy watching him play the whole season because the second half he came back down to earth, started turning over the ball and looking more like Patrick Beverly. But in the be- in the first half, he was a lot of fun. He was running point, and 
he put an up and under hook shot over Jalen Brown and gave him the too small celebration. Patrick Beverly scores on $300 million Jalen Brown and gives him the too small celebration. That's the energy I need in my life. That's the underdog mentality I need in my life. That was fun. What else was fun? Kelly Oubre. First game with the team. Nice to have a guy that size out there. Nice to have a long NBA athlete out there. Nice to have a, a guy that just looks like an NBA basketball player out there. You know, one of those athletes that every team has six of. The Sixers finally at least have one. You know, uh, we'll see, you know, what he looks like as he gets acclimated to the team a little bit more. P.J. Tucker was out there in the starting lineup. And he did what P.J. Tucker does. In 12 minutes, he gave you zero points on 0 for 1 from the three-point line. <laughs> Look, I don't know, man. Nick Nurse's system is different. There's so much movement and activity. I don't know if 37-year-old P.J. Tucker can hang. I just don't know. I just don't know. Um, Paul Reed was absolutely horrendous in this game. Paul Reed could not put the ball in the hoop if his life depended on it. I mean, he was at the rim so many times with little baby hook shots, just back rim, back rim, back rim, back rim, back rim, back rim. Uh, just, I guess, one of those nights where it feels like there's a, a lid on the damn hoop. Uh, but nobody... This is the thing. When Paul Reed has a bad game like that, all the Paul Reed haters come out and they say I told you he stinks I told you he stinks nobody ever thought Paul Reed was a good offensive basketball player I need people to understand when did anybody say that b-ball Paul was a good offensive basketball player we love b-ball because of his hustle and his rebounding ability and the fact that he just sheer effort never gives up he'll he'll chase a ball down three times in the same possession B-Ball Paul's just the energy that you need on the floor. Nobody ever thought he was a, a damn a good NBA player. And he saw it in this game at least, you know. But as a backup center, that's just all Paul Reed is, man. When you have Joel in there and then you just get B-Ball in there for a nice 10 minutes at the, at the backup center position, you know, I'm with it. Uh, Who else we got to talk about? Tobias Harris, 13 points, 5 for 12. Seven rebounds. I'll take seven rebounds from Tobias. That tells me he was given, you know, some good effort on the glass, at least in a preseason game. Um, somebody the other day said Nick Nurse is going to unlock Tobias Harris. I got news for you. Tobias Harris is Tobias Harris. He's 31 years old. He's not going to change now. He's the player he always was. He's just a guy. He's just a guy. We overpaid him to the moon, but he's just a guy. And he's always going to just be a guy. Nobody's going to unlock him. Nothing's going to change. He's going to go out. He's going to give you 13 points. That's what Tobias Harris is going to do. You're going to pay him $39 million, and he's going to give you 13 points. It is what it is. Mo Bamba is so ass, bro. <laughs> When we signed Mo Bamba, so many people were mad at me for that troll video that I made where I said, like, we we fleeced the league by signing Mo Bamba, and then obviously I was joking, and I talked about how bad Mo Bamba is now. He's never done anything in his career. He's hardly, hardly ever healthy, and the only single season he's had where he was healthy, he averaged 11 points per game. The people that just see these little warm-up videos or say, hey, man, he's a five and he can shoot the three and he can do this and never actually saw him play, they got a taste of it tonight. The guy is horrendous at basketball. I mean horrendous. All the way down to the dude is seven foot 90, gets a wide-open dunk and misses it. He missed a wide-open dunk. Bro, you're tall enough to probably dunk it without jumping. How are you seven foot four with a five inch vertical? I don't expect to see much of anything from Mo Bamba 
this season. I think when the rotations settle in, Paul Reed will be the backup center. I just have never been sold on Mo Bamba. Still not even close to being sold on Mo Bamba. I don't even understand the signing. I don't know why he's here. I would have rather another guard, another wing, than a third center who absolutely stinks. But I digress. Other than that, um, when the when the guys when the bench guys came in, Tarquavian Smith gave you five points in seven minutes. Uh, hit a couple. Uh, hit a, hit a very deep three pointer. That's what he was kind of known for uh, during his time in the in the in the summer league, at least. Uh, I still think Tarquavian Smith can be a member of this rotation. I think he's a player that we need. He's a he's a just a kind of a spark guy who's not afraid to let it fly. So I hope he kind of works his way into like the rotation. Uh, the rest of the guys like like uh, Ricky Council and uh, Jamar J- 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 Jamar not Jamarcus J- J- Jay Smart. I forget his first name. Um, all those guys stink, dude. <laughs> Let's call that what it is. But I'm excited. I I'm back. It's you know it's a sickness that I have. Uh. It's a sickness that we have. We can't help it. But Nick Nurse has given this team a, uh, a different identity. And it's gotten me at least very interested to see what they can look like. And this preseason game against the Boston Celtics at full strength made me very happy. That's all I got. Give me a million likes on the video. Subscribe. Turn your notification bell on. Join the playback streams. We out here.